Today we will talk about uh, the skeletal tissue. You know there are four types of tissues, right? Connective tissue, epithelial tissue, muscle tissue, and neural tissue. Then what is the skeletal tissue? Skeletal tissue belongs to connective tissue and the structures of the skeleton. That means bones, cartilages, right? Uh, ligaments, those structures are formed by the skeletal tissue, which is actually a connective tissue. <coughs> First, we'll see the structures formed by the skeletal tissue. As I have already mentioned, that bones, cartilages, those belong to skeletal tissue structures. So we'll talk about the bones, we'll talk about the cartilages, we'll talk about the coverings of the bone, different types of bone cells and bone marrow. So basically uh, in this part, we'll talk about the bones more detail and cartilages. So, Skeletal tissue structures include bones, cartilages, ligaments. The difference between the bones and other skeletal tissue structures is bones are vascular. That means bones have blood vessels. You must remember through the central canal of osteum, right? Blood vessels pass. So bones are vascular and bones have nerves but other structures like cartilages ligaments they are avascular no blood vessels or nerves that's why if you cut the cartilage no bleeding no pain because no blood vessel no nerve but if fracture occurs in the bone you will feel pain you will see bleeding. Okay. Three types of cartilages. We have already talked about it before. Hyaline cartilage, elastic cartilage, fibro cartilage. Hyaline cartilage provides support, flexibility, and resilience. Most abundant type cartilage is hyaline. Elastic cartilage is present only in few structures in your body, epiglottis, ear, pinna of the ear, this part, you know, has a lot of flexibility, right, elasticity. And also nasal septum. So in those structures, you have elastic cartilage. Fibrocartilage is also present only in few structures, intervertebral discs, pubic symphysis, meniscus of the knee joint. You already know the location, we have, uh, we have talked about that. Uh, so, uh, in this picture, you see most of the cartilaginous structures are hyaline cartilage. For example, uh, <coughs> coastal cartilages attached to the ribs in thoracic case, these are hyaline. Okay. Articular cartilages cover the end of the bones at the joints. Those are also hyaline cartilages. You know that in synovial joint we have talked about that. Particular cartilage, hyaline, right? Uh, the respiratory tract cartilages, you see in the right side of this slide, uh, respiratory tract, larynx, trachea, branches of trachea, right? Bronchi, all those structures are hyaline cartilaginous structure. So, hyaline cartilage is the most abundant. Uh, you see here uh, also the location of fibro 
and elastic card bones uh, the bones of the skeleton is divided into two groups appendicular skeleton or appendicular bones and axial skeleton or axial bones appendicular bones are the bones of the upper and lower extremities this to our upper extremities and this to our lower extremities axial bones include the bones of the skull this bones thoracic case and the vertebral column okay so that's the axial <coughs> functions of the bones in your body you already know that bones form the skeleton this whole structure right and which supports your whole body your <coughs> skeleton supports your whole body so supporting is the number one function of <coughs> the bones uh, protection you already know that different organs are protected by the bones for example your brain the most important organ is heavily protected by the cranial bones eyeballs are protected by the facial bones here right nose is protected by the bones here your heart lungs are protected by the ribs right so protection is another important function movement we know that bones form the joints and by forming the joints bones help in the movement of body parts because we move our body parts where at the joints is it clear so by forming the joints your bones help to move the body parts <coughs> storage a lot of minerals are stored inside the bones calcium phosphorus magnesium those important minerals are heavily stored inside the bones in the matrix of the bones and when your blood calcium concentration goes down bones release calcium into the blood so blood level of calcium goes up so uh, that is another important function of the bones blood cell formation you all know that bone marrow is located inside the bones and that is the primary site for blood cell formation mm -hmm. most of the blood cells are formed by the red bone marrow inside the bone <coughs> inside the bones you also have fats and triglycerides for example when you get older in adult person inside the long bones here inside the shaft you have yellow bone marrow yellow bone marrow is not red bone marrow right yellow bone marrow is fat so inside the bones not only red bone marrow but also fats are stored present and that fat provides energy we all know that fat when fat burns metabolism occurs fat metabolism occurs lot of energy is produced so we can say that stored form of energy is the fat classification of bones we can classify the bones in two ways one is by shape by looking at the shape of the bone we classify the bones that is one way another is by texture by shape we divide the bones into short bones long bones flat bones and 
irregular bonds. Okay. Short bonds. <coughs> Good examples. Carpal bonds. You see here, these are short bonds. There are eight here, right? You know that eight carpal bonds. These are short bonds. Long bonds are humerus, radius, ulna, tibia, fibula, femur. All those are long bones. Make sense? Flat bones. Most of the cranial bones, like parietal bones, occipital bone, sternum, this is also flat bone. So flat bones are flat and slightly curved, like this. So flat and slightly curved. <coughs> Irregular bones. There are some bones, they don't belong to long, short, neither flat. They have multiple processes, so irregular. For example, vertebrae, you remember vertebrae? Has seven processes, right? Spinous process, transverse process, superior articular, inferior articular, right? So if you see a vertebrae, uh, it is irregular. There are many processes sticking out from the main part. So. That's a good example, uh, a good example of irregular bone. Uh, so, those are different types of bones based on their shape. Long, short, flat, irregular. Now, by texture, we divide the bones into two types, compact, and spongy, okay, two types. Compact bones are hard bones, that's why it is called compact. And spongy bone is soft honeycomb-like bone in the skeleton. <coughs> so, uh, by texture, we divide into two types, compact and spongy. Here, you see, inside the long bone, if you cut a long bone and see inside, you will see the compact bone is mainly in the shaft part, that means this part compact bone and at the ends what you see outer thin layer is formed by outer covering is formed by compact bone but inside you will find spongy bone honeycomb like spongy bone so at the ends uh, only the covering is compact bone but whole inside is spongy bone inside the shaft of a long bone, you have a cavity that is called the medullary cavity. You see there, a cavity there that is called what? Medullary cavity. And that cavity contains red bone marrow in very early stage of life and gradually that red bone marrow becomes yellow bone marrow. So that means what? The red bone marrow turns to fat, yellow bone marrow. So this is an adult bone, we can tell because you see inside the medullary cavity, you see that yellow bone marrow is present. So only in very early stage of life, you have red bone marrow. But remember one thing very important, inside the spongy bone, you have always red bone marrow throughout the life. It will not change. Is it clear? Mm -hmm. So. Which red bone marrow becomes yellow bone marrow? The red bone marrow present inside the medullary cavity. But the red bone marrow inside the spongy bone will remain as red bone marrow throughout the life. That means what? That means if I ask you in very early stage of life where the blood cells are produced, you can say everywhere inside the bone, right? Because red bone marrow is everywhere, inside the medullary cavity, also inside the spongy bones. But in adults, only 
where you have the spongy bones, you have red bone marrow there. That means the ends of the long bones, right? And also inside the flat bones, you have spongy bone. So, blood cells are produced only from those areas. Uh, another thing here, just see the left picture, uh, a long bone has three parts, shaft in the middle and two ends, right, you all know that, two ends and a shaft connected by a shaft and shaft part is called diaphysis and ends are called epiphysis. Now, the difference between cis and cess is this is only one single this is more than one plural so since we have two ends we say epi phi cess two ends and only one shaft that's why we said diaphysis okay so we have epiphysis and a diaphysis if I only indicate one end, I will say epiphysis. <coughs> flat bone. If you cut a flat bone and see the structure of it, it is like a sandwich. Outer and inner layers are compact bones and in between two layers of compact bones, you have spongy bone. So that is the structure of a flat bone. You remember I said inside the flat bone you have a spongy bone and where always you have the red bone marrow. So flat bones produce blood cells throughout the life because flat bones always have red bone marrow inside because spongy bone is there. Okay, so it looks like a sandwich to compact layers and spongy bone inside. Now, uh, if you see the spongy bone under the microscope, uh, it looks like many spiky structures like going in different directions and those structures are called trabeculae. So, many spikes are running in different directions and that form the honeycomb like appearance of that bone. Those spikes are called trabeculae. And you see the spaces in between the trabeculae, those spaces contain the red bone marrow, right? So, red bone marrow is located in those spaces. Markings on the bones. You have already seen that different types of structures are present on the bone. Some structures <coughs> are for the attachment of muscles and ligaments. So, which structures of the bones are for the attachment of muscles and ligaments? Just underline for the attachment of muscles and ligaments. These are the structures. Tuberosity, crest, trochanter, line, tubercle, epicondyle, spine and process. So, all these structures you have seen when you saw the bones, right? You remember tuberosity, radial tuberosity, right? Pistial tuberosity, you must remember those, right? I hope you didn't forget. So, tuberosity, you remember that? Uh, radial tuberosity is here, right? Delta tuberosity, the humerus, right? Pistial tuberosity. So, those are kind of rounded projections for the attachment of muscles or ligaments. Crest, the word crest, uh, I'm sure you have heard when we talk about the mountain, we say crest of the mountain, right? That means the top part, crest of the mountain. The crest uh, are narrow, prominent ridge. Yes. Um, can you say or which one's the underline again? 
sorry, I was ready. A second? Could you say, the, like, of those that you said to underline, can you say which ones again? Uh, for the attachment of muscles yeah. and ligaments, right? Yeah. So, uh, give you an example. Ligaments. Okay. So, all these structures are for the attachment. Okay. Uh, trochanter. Trochanter is a large, irregular, bony mass. You know, uh, like if I take some clay, clay, kids clay, and you know, put on something like this, like this. That's the mass of right, irregular, not polished. So nice, irregular, bony <coughs> mass on the bone. Uh, best example you must remember: greater trochanter. You see, this is called the greater trochanter, the upper end of the femur, lesser trochanter. So it's like large, irregular, bony mass for the gluteal muscles. You know, gluteal muscles are large muscles in the back here. They go and get attached. Um, line. Lines are also present on some bones. For example, linea aspera in the femur, a line. Supracondylar lines above the condyles of the femur. So, sometimes we see lines on the bones. Tubercle. Tubercle is small rounded structure. So, tuberosity is larger round, round structure and tubercle is small round structure. For example, greater and lesser tubercles. You must remember at the upper end of the humerus. Intertubercular sulcus, so in between those two tubercles, you must remember, right? So, tuberosity is large round, tubercle is a small round. Make sense? So, you can say baby tuberosity is tubercle. Right? Uh, epicondyle. Epicondyle uh, sits on the condyles. Now, let me show you. You must remember that uh, the lower end of femur, you have two condyles, right? Remember that? These two are condyles. And this is epicondyle. Here. So, this whole thing is the condyle. These two are condyles. And this is, you see the elevated part? This is the epicondyle. So, we can say that epicondyle sits on the condyle. It's like, you know, sometimes you, if you are walking with your small kid, child, and uh, he said, I can't walk anymore, then what you do? You take him on your shoulder, right? Let's walk. Okay. So, you are condyle and your son is epicondyle. So, sitting on the condyle, right? So, uh, raised area above a condyle. Spine. Sharp, slender projection. Spines, we see uh, spinous processes, you know that, kind of sharp uh, projections. So, spines and process, processes are any extended structure from the main part of the bone can be termed as process. You must remember, you have seen many processes, right? This is mustard process, it is kind of, you know, round and blunt. You have seen another process here, stylized process, very sharp, pointed. So, zygomatic process of temporal bone, right? Cornered process, condylar process. So, all these are processes. Uh, any projection from the main part of the bone that extends outwards, that can be termed as a project process. So, all those structures are for the attachment. Now, there are some structures uh, in the bones, those are for the joints, formation of joints. So, which structures help to form the joints? Head. You all know this is the head of the humerus, right? Mm -hmm and it forms the shoulder joint with glenoid cavity, head of 
the femur forms the hip joint. So heads are for the joints. Facets. Facets are flat, smooth surface on the bone. And now you remember that in a vertebrae you have superior and inferior articular processes, right? So superior articular processes, for example, these two are superior articular processes and these two are inferior articular processes, right, mm -hmm. of the vertebrae above. So this is the vertebrae below, these are superior articular processes and this is the vertebrae above, these are inferior articular processes. Right? Now what happens, this superior articular process of vertebrae below gets attached to the inferior articular process of vertebrae above like this. Now, if you see the superior articular and inferior articular processes, you will see flat smooth surfaces and that is for the joint here. Yeah. Say superior articular process here and inferior articular process, and they get attached to each other like this. And this area is the facet. So flat surfaces, smooth flat surfaces. Condyle. Already you know the condyles. These are the condyles, right? Uh, at the lower end of femur. These are the condyles at the upper end of tibia, and they form joint, the knee joint. You know that. So, condyles are uh, rounded articular projection and for the joints, formation of joints. Ramos, arm like structure in a bone. The best example is this is a ramus of mandible, you all know that. And this part of it forms the temporomandibular joint. Okay? So, we can say that this part articulates with the temporal bone. Uh, not really. This is the only one. Yeah. Uh, so those are the structures for the joints. Now there are some depressions and openings in some bones. Usually, just in general, depressions are to hold some structure in it. Right? If there is a depression on the surface of the bone. For example, hypophysial fossa, you must remember in the sphenoid bone, right? For pituitary gland, remember that? Pituitary gland fits there, sits there. So, depressions are usually to hold or provide room to some glands or other structure. And openings, now you also know there are openings in the bones. Those are for the blood vessels and nerves. That's why you see many openings at the base of the skull, right? From a magnum for spinal cord and you must remember there are many other holes, openings. Those are for the blood vessels and cranial nerves. So, depressions are for the usually glands or some structures to lie in it and openings are for the blood vessels or nerves to pass through. Let us see, uh, what are those structures in the bone? Meatus. This is called external acoustic meatus or outer ear canal. So, meatus is actually canal, canal like structure inside the bone, like a tunnel. <coughs> uh, sinus, you already know. Air filled cavities inside the bone are sinuses. So, sinus is a cavity inside the bone filled with air. The largest sinus is inside the maxilla. You know that maxillary sinus. <coughs> Fossa, a shallow basin like depression, like this. So, this is a fossa. Example, hypophysial fossa. Here in at the lower end of humerus, you must remember, this is a big fossa here, right? Called olecranon fossa. Remember that? Olecranon fossa. Radial fossa and cornered fossa in the front, right? So fossa. You must remember intercondylar 
fossa here in between condyles, intercondyle and fossa, right? So, fossa are the depression, basic like depression. Uh, sometimes it can hold glands, sometimes fats or other stuff. Uh, groove, narrow depression, elongated narrow depression. If the depression is narrow and elongated like this, that is a groove. You know, groove, sometimes you see groove on the wood, right? Piece of wood groove. So, to hold the blood vessels, ligaments, or nerves, let them pass through. Uh, fissures, narrow slit like opening. Now, the groove and fissure, the difference is groove is a depression on the surface of the bone and like long, like this. If any blood vessel, for example, an artery, wants to lie in it, it can lie. Okay, excellent. Now, fissure is opening like this. Round or almost round opening is called a foramen. If the opening is elongated, that is called like slit-like <coughs> opening, that is called a fissure. So, this is what? Foramen. And this is fissure. Make sense? So, both are open. Uh, you already know that a long bone has two ends called epiphysis and the shaft part middle that is diaphysis. So, diaphysis and epiphysis. <coughs> Covering of the bone. The covering of the bone is called periosteum. Peri means around. You know that. Peri means what? Around. It's a perimeter, right? To measure around. So, periosteum is bone. So, around the bone, the covering that is periosteum. The periosteum has two layers. Outer layer is called Fibrous layer and inner layer is osteogenic layer. So, outer fibers and inner osteogenic layer. So, if I ask you uh, among these two layers, very common sense question, which one should provide protection? Outer one or inner one? Outer one, right? So, outer and you see the name fibers. That means what? It is tough. You must remember I mentioned before, if any structure has a lot of fibers, that structure is very tough. Is it clear? So, outer fibrous layer is for the protection, provides protection. It is very tough and outer. Inner layer is called osteogenic layer. Now, think about that. Osteo means bone, genic, genesis means production, right? Synthesis. So, inner layer helps in new bone formation. That's why it is called osteogenic layer. So, those are two layers of periosteum. Since inner layer helps to form new bone tissue, in the inner osteogenic layer, you have different types of bone cells. Osteoblasts, osteoclasts, and osteogenic cells. These cells have to form new bones. For example, osteogenic cells. Its name is telling you these are stem cells and they can multiply to produce new bone cells. So, stem cells multiply to produce new bone cells. So, that's how these 
cell has to form newborn tissue because newborn tissue must have new cells, right? Make sense? Mm -hmm. Newborn tissue must have new cells. Osteoblasts. Osteoblasts. Remember here one thing. Um, blast. If you hear blast at the end of the name of the cell, that means young cell. So osteoblasts are young bone cells. Osteo means bone, and they produce matrix of the bone. So you see now you got two cells, two types of cells. Osteogenic cells, they are stem cells, they produce new bone cells and osteoblasts are young cells, they produce what? Matrix. Make sense? And those are the two main components of the bone, cells and the matrix. Right? So, these two cells help in new bone tissue formation. Now, osteoclasts, another type of cells are there. These are giant cells, big. They love to break the matrix, okay? So, they are giant, big, and they love to destroy, you know? So, osteoclasts love to destroy the matrix or break the matrix. So here you see two things, osteoblasts produce matrix and osteoclasts destroy matrix. Both are needed during newborn formation, okay? Because when newborn is formed, if any excess amount of, you know, matrix is produced somewhere, that should be polished, that should be removed from there. So both osteoblasts and osteoclasts are important, right? Like when you just think that, when you build the wall or you know, you got a hole in the wall of your house, what you will do? You will put some speckle yeah, uh, inside, right? First, roughly, you put it and let it dry. And then you do what? Use the sensor power or something to polish it, right? To make it smooth. So not only to put the thing, but you also need to sometimes polish, right? To make it perfect. So, osteoblasts will produce the matrix of the bone, osteoclasts, if there is some, you know, irregular surface or excessive bony matrix is there, it will destroy to make it smooth. So, all these three types of cells are present in the osteogenic layer. Uh, so, that's the periosteum mm -hmm. around the bone. Now, there is another membrane which is inside the bone. For example, this is a cross section of a long bone like this. If I cut like this, you will see the periosteum, two layers of periosteum here around the bone. And this is the medullary cavity, right, that contains bone marrow or yellow bone marrow, whatever. Um, there is another membrane here. This one is called <coughs> endosteum. So this is periosteum, has two layers in it, outer fibers, inner osteogenic. So this is periosteum. And this membrane that is around the medullary cavity, this is the endosteum. Endo means inside. Endosteum. Okay. So, <coughs> uh, endosteum also contains bone cells, uh, osteoblasts and osteoclasts. Osteoblasts help to produce new bone tissue, matrix and osteoclasts remove. <coughs> Here you see the periosteum, right, and they didn't uh, show endosteum here. This is endosteum. See here? Oh, okay. They did. Okay. So, periosteum and endosteum. 
Okay. Uh, location of hemopoietic tissue, red bone marrow. I have already mentioned. Just remember that in early stages of life, everywhere inside the bones, you have red bone marrow. Inside the medullary cavity as well as inside the spongy bones. But as we get older, the red bone marrow inside the medullary cavity turns to yellow bone marrow. Fact. Now, yellow bone marrow is a fat and that mainly provides energy, stored form of energy. You know that, right? Fat. But sometime, remember, uh, the research has found that sometime yellow bone marrow can again become red bone marrow. If, you know, your body okay, can be converted to red bone marrow again. That has been shown in recent experiments. Different types of cells in the bone. I have already mentioned osteogenic cells, stem cells. They produce new bone cells. Osteoblasts, if you hear blast, that means young, young cells and produce matrix of the bone. Osteocytes. Osteocytes, if you hear site, that means mature cells. Blast is young, you can write it down. Blast is young and site is mature. Okay. Uh, osteoblasts produce plenty of matrix because they are young cells and you know that young people can produce more, right? Yeah. Healthy and produce more. Osteocytes are old mature cells and they uh, help in maintenance of health of the bone. So just know that osteocytes, uh, they don't produce plenty of matrix, but uh, maintaining the health if small amount of the or functions of the bones. Uh, osteoclasts are giant cells that I have mentioned and they destroy the matrix, break the matrix. Here you see uh, different types of bone cells, osteogenic cells are not too big uh, compared to other cells. Osteoblasts are healthy cells because young, right? And matrix synthesizing cells responsible for the growth of the bone, right? Uh, when osteoblasts get older, they become osteocyte. Right? When they get matured, older, they become osteocyte. The size gets smaller. So this cell, osteoblast, when it gets older, the size gets smaller. We, when we get older, our size gets smaller. Right? Shrink. So same thing. Osteoblasts become osteocyte and get smaller. One thing you see here in osteocyte, uh, processes arise. And you must remember when we talked about the structure of the compact bone, I showed you osteons, central canal, and lacunae. Inside the lacunae, you have osteocytes, like this. Why I showed like this, those processes, like a spider, many legs, right? So, osteocytes sit inside the lacunae. Lacunae is the cavity. So that's why I said osteocyte within lacun. Uh, osteoclasts are very strong, giant cells, and they have multiple nuclei and many mitochondria because they destroy the matrix. And to destroy, they need more power, right? More control. So that's why they have more nuclei, more mitochondria. Mitochondria is called the powerhouse of the cell. You know that, right? We have talked about that powerhouses are mitochondria. <coughs> okay. Uh, now uh, we will continue uh, to talk about the skeletal tissue. In this part, uh, we will talk about the structure of the bone. Uh, ossification. Ossification is the process of formation of bone. 
process of formation of bone, also called osteogenesis. Uh, two ways the bones of your body are formed. That means there are two types of ossification. One is called endochondral ossification or intrachondral, same thing, endo or inter. Both means inside. And another is intermembranous. We will talk about that. Then uh, you already know the parts of a long bone. We will talk about the blood supply of a long bone and few hormones that work on the bone. First, uh, you already know that the compact bone is formed by many osteos. Osteos are columnar structures. I showed you before, like many columnar structures are bundled together, together to form the compact bone. So this is actually the structure of a compact bone. Make sense? And if <coughs> you just see one columnar structure, this is an osteon. So many osteons or columnar structures are bundled together to form the compact bone. Make sense? Now, if you make a cross section and see under the microscope, what you will see, you will see many circles, right? Like this, here you see many circles, right? So each circle is what? One osteon. Is it clear? One osteon. So, that's why when you see the compact bone under the microscope, you have already seen like this. Many osteons. And inside the osteon, you have a central canal. Right? And blood vessels and nerves pass through it. So, you know that bones are vascular and bones have nerves. So, the blood vessels and nerves are present inside the central canal. Okay? <coughs> Around the central canal, you have lacunae. Line up nicely like this. Lacunae are tiny cavities or pouches in which I just showed you the osteocytes, the mature bone cells are located. Okay? So, you can say osteocyte in lacuna. So these are osteocytes. Okay? Now, the space in between lacuna is called lamella. Lamella is the hard matrix of the bone. So, in between lacunae, the space is filled with hard matrix of the bone that is called what? Lamella. This is osteocyte in lacunae. Osteocyte in lacunae. So, the hard matrix is the lamella. Uh, now, if I see, you see here, this is how the lacunae are uh, uh, present inside the osteo. So, if I draw lines like this, this is one circle, this is another circle, right? If I connect them. So, lamella is here, lamella is here, lamella is here. So, I can say here, layers of lamella, like this. This is one layer, this is another layer of lamella, this is another layer of lamella, heart matrix. That's what they have shown here. You see, like this, like this, like this, right? So, uh, <coughs> just know that heart matrix is called the lamella. Uh, that's the structure of a compact bone. Now, if you see a spongy bone, as I have mentioned, uh, it looks like a honeycomb and many trabeculae are present, spikes. Um, 
and trabeculae are present uh, aligned along the line of stress. No complete ostium is present in the spongy bone. <coughs> now, uh, the chemical composition of bone. What kind of chemicals are present in the bone? Uh, in bone tissue, you have both organic and inorganic chemicals. You know in your body, you have two types of chemicals. In very first lecture, we have talked about that. Organic chemicals and inorganic chemicals. So, both are present in the bone. The organic chemicals are called osteoids. So, osteoid is the organic part of the bone and inorganic part is the mineral salt. So, osteoid is the organic part or component and mineral salts are inorganic components. Okay. Um, now, the organic component or osteoid <coughs> is the organic, right? And it is the matrix of the bone that is secreted by osteoblasts, young cells. I just mentioned a few minutes ago. Osteoblasts secrete that organic matrix. Matrix has two things in it. Round substances and fibers. So, matrix is the organic part secreted by the osteoblasts, the young bone cells and the matrix consists of two things, ground substances are the chemicals and the fibers. So, that is the matrix. <coughs> uh, what kind of fibers? Collagen fibers. So, these fibers are collagen, collagen fibers. And ground substances, the chemicals, what are the chemicals? Proteoglycans and glycoproteins. So those are the chemicals, proteoglycans and glycoproteins. So those are the ground substances, chemicals. And fibers are what kind of fibers? What kind of fibers? Collagen, Collagen fibers. So that is the organic part, posture. The Organic compo compound or part provides strength and flexibility, tensile strength and flexibility of the bone. The hard, uh, sorry, the you know bones can be bent a little bit without breaking it. You can bend slightly, not too much. If you try to do too much, it will break, right? But it can bend a little bit. That flexibility is more in young bones. When you are young, you will see less fracture, right? Uh, when you get old, fracture, easily bones get fractured. The reason is flexibility is more in young bones. The flexibility is given by the fibers. Okay? Now, mineral salts, the inorganic part uh, includes calcium, you already know that, and phosphate, calcium phosphate. Kistas. And calcium phosphate provides the hardness of the bone, not the flexibility, but the hardness of the bone. So, two different things. Now, if the collagen fibers, you know, in uh, the bone, the collagen fibers are deteriorated, then what will happen? The bones will easily break because the flexibility will be lost. Make sense? Easily break. And if the amount of mineral salts decreases, then the bones will get soft, will get soft. So, the hardness is given by the mineral salts and flexibility is given by the osteo.
uh, formation of bone. The bones of your body uh, are formed by two wells. Most of the bones are formed from the cartilages, hyaline cartilages. You must remember I mentioned before, whole fetal skeleton is what? Hyaline cartilage, right? Whole fetal skeleton is hyaline cartilage. So, those cartilages become bones. So, that's why we can say most of the bones come from what? Hyaline cartilage, right? And that is called intracondral or endochondral ossification. Intra or endo, you can use either. Chondral, chondro means cartilage. Remember, chondro means cartilage. Osteo means what? Bone. Chondro means cartilage. So, chondro means Osteo means bone. So, if I say osteocyte, that means mature bone cell. If I say chondrocyte, mature cartilage cell. If I say osteoblast, young bone cell. If I say chondroblast, young cartilage cell. Make sense? Blast is young, I mentioned before, and site is mature. You remember that? Okay. So, <coughs> anyway, uh, endochondral or intrachondral, endo or inter, uh, same meaning, inside. So, most of the bones come from the hyaline cartilage and that is called endochondral ossification or bone formation. Ossification means bone formation. Some bones of your body come from membrane, not cartilage, come from membrane. And that's why that process is called intramembranous ossification. Bones are coming from membrane, inside the membrane. Which bones come from intermembranous ossification? Uh, clavicle, your clavicles, and most of the flat bones, like sternum, some cranial bones are flat bones, right? So, clavicle and most of the flat bones are formed from membrane. That's why it's called intermembranous ossification. Rest of the bones of your body come from hyaline cartilage. That's why that is called endochondral or intrachondral ossification. <coughs> uh, I'll just briefly uh, show you how bone is formed from a membrane and a cartilage. So first, let's see a membrane. This membrane, where the bone is formed, is called <coughs> mesenchymal <coughs> membrane. Mesenchymal membrane. And mesenchyme is an embryonic tissue. So, that embryonic tissue forms that membrane. That's why it is called mesenchymal membrane. Inside that tissue, you have fibroblasts. You know, fibroblasts are the connective tissue cells. So, these are the fibroblasts. So, what happens first, some of these fibroblasts, those are located in the center part, become osteoblasts. So, these fibroblasts turn to osteoblasts. So, these are osteoblasts. Blasts, young bone cells. And then, <coughs> you must remember, two minutes ago I mentioned that 
osteoblasts are young bone cells and they produce and secrete matrix. So these osteoblasts will secrete matrix around them. It's like this. This matrix is soft secretion, not yet hard. Then next what happens, uh, as the osteoblasts get older, mature, they become smaller that I mentioned few minutes ago. When we get older, we get smaller. So they become smaller. And some processes arise, right? And now these are called what? Osteocytes, mature cells. These are osteocytes. All these osteoblasts become osteocytes, smaller and processing the life. Now, <coughs> another thing happens this soft matrix becomes harder, hard. Now, the matrix is hard and osteoblasts become osteocytes, smaller. So, what will happen? The hard matrix will not move will stay there. So, a cavity or a space will be created here because this matrix got harder and osteoblasts got smaller. So, a space will be created. That is the lacuna. That is how the lacuna is formed. So, now you have osteocyte within lacuna. This is the lacuna. Okay. This is the lacuna. And hard matrix becomes lamella. Matrix is getting harder and <coughs> becoming lamella. Okay. So that's how a bone is formed from a membrane. Just remember what I said. I'm just quickly repeating. Uh, this membrane is called mesenchymal membrane. Mesenchyme is an embryonic tissue that forms the membrane and the cells in that membrane are called fibroblasts. The fibroblasts become osteoblasts. That happens genetically. It is coded that way that these cells will become this, okay, will differentiate this way and osteoblasts produce and secrete matrix around them and osteoblasts get older, mature, get smaller, become osteocytes. And the matrix, secreted matrix, become hard, and that is the lamella. And the space around the osteocyte is the lacuna. Okay? So that's how the uh, membrane becomes bone. And by intermembranous ossification, which bones are formed, I have already mentioned, clavicles and most of the blood bones. Now, endochondral or intercondral, how uh, the bones are formed from hyaline cartilage. Most of the bones come from hyaline cartilage because fetal skeleton is mainly hyaline cartilage. So, let's see the steps. Just I'll briefly mention the steps. This is a hyaline cartilage. Okay. Uh, in step one, I'll just briefly mention the steps, uh, not in detail. Uh, some. This is a cartilage, so the cells are called chondrocytes. So some chondrocytes, those are located in the center of the shaft of this hyaline cartilage. These chondrocytes become osteo. Plasts become bone cells. So, cartilaginous cells become bone cells. And this area is now called primary ossification center. Primary ossification center. These cells, those are uh, 
in primary ossification center, they, this is interesting here. These cells, instead of getting smaller, they enlarge. They get bigger, 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 and at one point, after they occupy more space, when all these cells get enlarged, bigger, bigger, they occupy more space and then they rupture and form the medullary cavity. Form the medullary cavity. Okay. So, uh, we say hypertrophic. Hypertrophic, they become enlarged and then eventually rupture. The cavity is created there. Another thing happens uh, at the same time around the shaft of this cartilage, the tissue here becomes thin plate of bone, and that is called bony collar. Around the shaft, so medullary cavity is formed inside and bony collar is formed around. That is stage 1. You see the leftmost picture, primary ossification center and the bony collar or bone collar. Then what happens next? Uh, medullary cavity is here. Two more ossification centers are formed or appear at the ends. Those are called secondary ossification centers. So, these are secondary because they appear late. Primary in the middle of the shaft first and then secondary. This two. So this is uh, step two, and you know cartilaginous are avascular, no blood vessel in cartilage. You already know that, but both are vascular. So what happens? Blood vessel enters into the bone, enters into the medullary cavity, and branch. So. Two more ossification centers, those are called secondary ossification centers, appear at the ends and blood vessels penetrate. Okay, blood vessels penetrate uh, into that uh, cartilage, which is becoming bone. You see there. Then what happens um, from secondary ossification center? Bone tissue is formed because these cells become osteoblasts and secret matrix. So, bone tissue is formed here and also the medullary cavity gets bigger, okay, expands that way. So, now you see here, um, bony collar is here. So, from the bony collar, new bone tissue is formed and bony collar becomes thick like this and form the bone around the medullary cavity and bone tissue starts to grow that way and from secondary ossification center bone tissue starts to grow this way and just know that from secondary bone tissue is formed and move towards the center and from the center bone tissue grows and moves towards the ends. So, for example, this part is still cartilage because bone tissue is being formed from both the center and the end and this part is not yet converted to bone tissue, right? So, this is a piece of cartilage. This is a piece of cartilage. And that is called the growth plate. I don't know if you have heard this growth plate. Okay? So, the piece of cartilage that is not yet converted to bone tissue. Okay? Uh, but this Growth plate becomes thin gradually, right? Because from both 
sides, the bone tissue is being formed, thin, 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 and eventually remains there as a thin plate of cartilage. And this is now called epiphyseal plate. So growth plate when it is thick and when it the growth is completed, remember here growth is completed but a thin piece of cartilage remains and it will remain as cartilage will cartilage will never be converted to bone. Same thing here will remain as cartilage throughout the life and that is a weak point in your body epiphyseal fracture occurs here because this is a weak point. Uh, also, in another place, the cartilage will never become bone. That is around the end of the bone. And that is the articular cartilage, you know the joint at the end of the bones articular cartilage which is also hyaline cartilage right you remember the end of the bones are covered by in the synovial joint you did draw right particular cartilage hyaline cartilage so that will always remain as cartilage will never be converted to bone make sense so here this thin layer of cartilage will never be converted to bone and here the epiphyseal plate will never be converted to bone so these are hyaline cartilages will remain as cartilage, okay? So that's how uh, the endochondral ossification or intracondral ossification occurs. Now, you probably know that by looking at the thickness of growth plate, we can determine the age of that person. Have you heard that? By looking at the thickness of that plate because this is very specific the change of thickness of growth plate occurs in a timely manner. Make sense? Even after growth is stopped, we cannot. But during the growth of the body, we can tell if it is, you know, five years or six years or seven years, you can by looking at the thickness, okay? And that's how, you know, in forensic medicine, uh, investigators, they if uh, they find a dead body, they, you know, determine if it is a young skeleton or old, if young, how old, right, that, those kind of things, like, uh, looking at the thickness of the growth plate, because that happens, the change, uh, in very timely way. <coughs> uh, just to know that, uh, in a long bone, three sets of blood vessels are present. Just know the names and their location. Uh, in the shaft, middle of the shaft, uh, you will find the nutrient blood vessels. Nutrient, have you heard nutrient before? Yeah. Yes, in the femur, I showed you, right? Tiny hole in the middle of the shaft. So, through the middle of the shaft, nutrient blood vessels pass. And through this area, you see, uh, where the epiphyseal plate is, blood vessels pass, and these are called metaphyseal blood vessels. So, epiphyseal blood vessels to the shaft, epiphyseal and metaphyseal blood vessels to this area where the ends are attached to the shaft, metaphyseal blood vessels, okay. And there is another set of blood vessels only supply blood to the outer part of the bone that is called periosteal blood vessels like this. You know periosteum is the covering, right? So that blood vessel is present in the periosteum and supplies blood to the outer part of the bone. So this is periosteum. So nutrient through the shaft, metaphyseal here and periosteal in the periosteum. So those are three sets of blood vessels. That means what? If I ask you the middle portion a shaft of a long bone is getting blood from which blood vessels? Nutrient. Make sense? If I ask you the ends 
of a long bone are getting blood from which blood vessels? Metaphyseal, right? And if I ask you the outer surface of the bone is getting blood from which blood vessels? Periosteal blood vessels. Remodeling. Uh, throughout the life, this is very interesting, throughout the life, new bone tissue is being formed and old bone tissue is being destroyed. These two things together is called remodeling. Okay, So formation and destruction. Both are happening all the time. You don't see that, but both are happening, right? So, in early stage, which is more? Formation or destruction? Formation. That's why the body grows, right? The bones grow. Because production is more than destruction, right? But destruction is there, you know, to shape the bones, right? You need to destroy the tissue. Is it clear? And in old age, which is more? Production is less and destruction is more. That's why bones get weak, right? Shrink. So, when we get very old, the production decreases and destruction increases. And uh, both are happening throughout the life and that is called the remodeling of the bone. Uh, let's stop here. In next class, I'll just uh, talk about the hormones work on the bones.